Ghanaians are known to be very hospitable. And he is going to give his account on whether Ghanaians are very hospitable, respectful or not. Let us take a look. The people, um, as I mentioned earlier, are some of the nicest people uh, you'll ever meet. Um, very hospitable. Um, they have a custom in their culture. You, whenever you're eating or whenever you have food, you have to invite everyone around you to, to your food. So you have a bowl of fufu or a banku or whatever, they'll always say, you're invited. Like, you're invited to come and, and join them. And if you, I think like in America, we sort of do the same thing. Like we'll offer food, but we don't expect people to say yes. And even if someone does say yes, you kind of think like, oh, that's rude. You want to eat my food? Even though we just offered it to them. Whereas there, um, it's different. Like if they offer it to you and you say, no, it's okay. They won't be offended. And if you say yes, it's okay. They won't be offended either. And they'll share their food with you. And even even though even if they're poor and they have nothing and that's like the only meal they're gonna eat all day, they'll they'll share their meal with you because it's really important to them to be hospitable. As Africans, especially in Ghana, we were groomed that no matter the amount of money or the volume of food that you have, you should be able to share with someone need. Uh -huh. That is how we were groomed. Yeah. So if you are in a family of seven, instead of cooking for seven people, you either cook for eight or nine people so that we prepare in case visitors come. If we don't receive any visitor, we enjoy the food the next morning. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the times too, if they can afford it, they'll make more than their family can eat, expecting visitors. Just in, or just in case a visitor shows up, they'll have food for them. And sometimes the visitor, the no visitors will show up and it's okay, and they'll just eat the food later. But they always try to make sure there's enough food in, in case a visitor shows up that they can offer food to them. Another cultural thing is you never use your left hand for anything. You don't greet with your left hand, you don't shake hands, you don't pick up things with your left hand. Because, I mean, obviously back in the day they didn't have toilet paper in Ghana. <laughs> and so they would use their left hand to like clean themselves up after going to the bathroom. And so you wouldn't use your left hand for anything because it's like unsanitary. It's really inappropriate and dirty. <laughs> and so now they have soap and they have toilet paper and stuff like that, but it's just part of their culture now. You just don't use your left hand, especially with elders, with uh, seniors. The younger generation is not as stickler about it, but definitely the older people, you don't want to use your left hand for anything. Personally, I could vibe to that because I can't even think of using my left hand to greet someone or eat. Nah, nah. I mean, you wouldn't be penalized, but then it's not a norm in Ghana. The majority of the Gen Zs are, you know, using their right hand. I think a few people, a lesser percentage of them are using their left hand, but I don't see it in Ghana that maybe um, a Gen Z or a young person using the left hand to create or maybe eating or something, unless you are naturally um, um, a left hand, a left hand person, but you'll be even compelled to use your right hand to eat in as much as you're a left hand person, yeah. It takes a lot to make a Ghanaian mad. And even when they're mad, they don't, they're not rash. Like I said, they're not violent or anything and it just passes and everything's gonna be okay after that. So that's really sweet. Even the Ashantis, which is who I serve most with, they're, they're pretty stubborn people. <laughs> They yell a lot, but they don't ever fight, and that's okay with them. For them to yell, it's a norm for them, but they will never fight. They will never fight. Even their language is pretty aggressive. And so when I first got there, I remember thinking everyone was yelling at each other. And I remember asking my companion, like, why is everybody shouting at each other? And he's like, oh, they're not shouting. That's just the way they talk. And so you sort of get used to that, too. They just speak loudly and sort of aggressively even though they're really pacifist by nature, most of them. Oh, Ghanaians, they travel a lot. They love traveling, especially in Europe, um, even in the Eastern United States, you'll find a ton of Ghanaians. Oh, how special Ghanaians are and how privileged I was, I guess, to serve in their home country and to be around them all the time because they're just so friendly and so kind and so sweet all the time. Of course, the Ghanaians travel a lot. Um, they travel just for education, for um, tourism and also to seek for greener pastures. Yeah, Kenyans really travel. Kenyans really travel. I second that. It's a funny story. So <clears throat> in Chi, there's this, it's Debi. Debi means no. It's it, Debi. And so my 
trainer my first day on mission kept on saying Debbie 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 to like all these little kids and I remember I turned to him and I said like well why why do all these little kids have the same name like why did everyone why did all their parents name them Debbie and he started laughing he's like no Debbie's not a name <laughs> it means no and she and so that was kind of funny like oh that's embarrassing <laughs> now to whether Ghana is really safe for foreigners or not because personally I think Ghana and Africa is really safe okay I think right after independence we are part of the few countries that we didn't have any civil war with the Americans it really tells you that I mean we are, we are safe we are safe in Ghana well thankfully Ghana is really safe <laughs> most of it's just drive-bys they'll drive by on like a motorcycle and they'll grab your scriptures or your bag out of your hand and just drive off but even that's really rare I personally felt really safe all of the time, even after dark. Ghanaians are so non-violent. They're, the they're the only West African country who hasn't had civil war since they've gained independence. I think there's a lot of factors that go into that. One thing is like the Ashanti tribe, which is like Kumasi region. They're probably the most influential tribe in Ghana and they're, they're pretty non-violent. They're afraid of blood and stuff, and so they just don't like that kind of stuff. And I think because of that, there isn't a lot of conflict. There's a lot of verbal, they talk a lot. They'll yell at each other for ages, but they'll never hit each other. Like I, I don't, I only saw one fight once, and it was between two women. <laughs> sort of like a cat fight. But I never saw men punch each other my whole two years on mission. Ashanti tribe would like to claim Ghana for themselves, but you know, Ghana, doesn't belong to them yet. So I mean, yeah, that's that's they are. They are most influential. They're very respectful. Um, they they have this sense of you know togetherness when it comes to the people of Ashanti region. Um, so it's really safe, actually. I mean, apartment security is good. Sometimes you get random like because you have mosquito nets on your or mosquito screens on all your windows to not let mosquitoes in because of like malaria and stuff. They also part of the lies that when it comes to Africa. There are so many mosquitoes, so many people are afraid of malaria and because of that they, they wouldn't visit Africa. That's, that's a lie. I mean, there are mosquitoes here, but it doesn't mean that when it comes to Ghana or when it comes to any other places in Africa, they're going to, you know, be affected with um, malaria. No, that is not the case. That is not always the case. That is not. And sometimes, and then there's no glass windows, it's loose. It's like plastic. Like there's a lever and you if you pull it down it opens the window and if you push it up it closes the window oh no it's not always the case there's modernization so in ghana we also have um, glass doors glass windows and all that it's not always the case that we have um, wooden windows so if you leave your windows open some people will like cut your mosquito screen then they'll reach in and try to just grab whatever they can inside the window but even then it didn't happen very often Ghana is notorious for being very safe. They have a lot of citizen police, I guess you would say. It's not legal, but they punish each other if you break the law. So like if there's a thief or something, then I won't be graphic, but they'll deal with the thief how they think it's just. This thing really happens in Kumasi and um, Accra. If you are in discipline or if you're a thief and they get hold of you, they're going to punish you before and they hand you over to the police because they, they wouldn't want you to continue infecting people with this habit. People work really hard for their money and their property, so they wouldn't want you to use maybe a second or maybe a day to plan and come and steal from them. So they will punish you, yeah. And so it doesn't happen very often because people are scared of that. They know if I steal something, my life's in danger. And so they don't most of the time. So there's not very much crime. Yeah, Ghanaian English is, I mean, they were colonized by Britain, by England, and so they have England English, but on top of that is their local dialect gives them their own distinct sort of accents. And uh, I'm trying to think, I mean, one, like I said before, is the ER. Everything's uh, so Elda. That's what they'll call you, Elda. 
it'd be like Elder Taylor, how are you? Say I'm fine or and you? I'm fine. <laughs> like and they'll try to use English with you a lot too. Because they like to practice, especially the little kids. Of course we don't play with our tea. We don't play with our tea. Peter. Peter. Carpenter. Instead of Peter. Carpenter. Carpenter. I mean, yeah. We don't play with our tea. Our tea is very, very important to us. They pronounce T's really well. They make fun of Americans because we sort of don't pronounce our T's. Like we'll say hat. Like for a hat. But let's say hat. They pronounce the every T. And they have a language too, it's called Pidgin. Which is like broken English. It's a lot worse in Nigeria. But Ghana has it a little bit. So like if you're asking how someone's doing, they'll say, how you day? I mean like, how are you? And their response would be, I do, meaning like, I'm good. <laughs> so it's English, but they just use it differently. Um, or like, what can be your name? It's like, what's your name? <laughs> like, my name be Seth, or my, my name is Seth. So they just sort of put words in different places than we would be used to. But if you listen really closely, then it makes sense. So that's the way they learn it, I guess. There's a language family in Ghana, it's called Akan, the Akan family, um, which is, Legend has it that it's sort of the original family that spoke this Akan language. Um, but as they grew, as the population grew and things, they needed to sort of find new land and find new space to live. And so Ghana has a number of languages that branched off of the Akan, the original Akan language. So Chi is one of those branches. Or uh, Fanti. Fanti is another branch which they speak in Cape Coast, down in the south. The Fanti and the Ashanti people speak different languages but then our languages are similar. The Ashanti people speak um, Asante or Asante and we speak the Fante. So um, in terms of when I'm asking you that how are you, okay, a Fante, will, a, a Fante man will ask you Otiden, a Shanti man will ask you Etisane. So we can really communicate, we, we understand each other really well. They sounded quite different to me but to their ears it was enough that they could communicate, which is so interesting. And there's other Akan languages like Bono and different things. But Chi is the biggest Akan language, like the most population of speakers in Ghana. It is easy for you to speak the Chi. If you really pay attention to it, it is easy for you to speak the Chi. But in terms of the Fante, the Fante, trust me, it will take you some time for you to be able to learn the Fante. So most of the white people that do come to Ghana, um, can, you know, in a sort of a way, speak the trees more, small, speak the trees more, small. But when it comes to the real fancy, for you to even get an accent is very difficult. And the people, the Ashanti people, even find it difficult for them to speak their fancy. But we personally, I can speak their language. So maybe Otiden, okay, this is fancy. But it is saying in Ashanti, but an Ashanti man or Ashanti woman feels very challenging or difficult to speak my, my fancy and also speak the exact accent that that they expect to speak. Chi, it's a very simple language. It's written language too. I learned how to read it, read it but I didn't always know what I was saying. Because <laughs> they use English letters, but there are certain letters that aren't included, and there are some letters that are excluded. Inside the, you know, the alphabet, the English alphabet, we also have two additional alphabet. That is the A, it looks like a three, and they all look like a 10 C a 10C or a mirrored C to the left. Yes, yeah, so we have two additional alphabets in addition to the 26th alphabet that we have, yeah. And they just pronounce it differently. So like we say A, they say A. Ah. And we're B and they B. So A, B, C, D, E. Eh. It's very like, E. Eh. <laughs> Ghanaians love it when you do speak their language. When you speak Chi to them, they they, they feel this a kinship. There's everywhere in Ghana when you go to Cote d'Ivoire, go to any other francophone countries and you're going to try to speak the French with them, they get really happy. In the same way when I go to Switzerland and you speak their Swiss German, they also feel like you're part of them. So it is not only I'm centered in Kenya, it's, it's worldwide, it's something that is common. Ghanaians are the friendliest people you'll meet on earth, really. Yeah, even, even within Africa, people say Africans are friendly. Ghana is sort of the epitome of friendly Africa, the friendliest people. That's the end. Is Africa really dangerous for Africans and also foreigners? Are the lies that they do peddle about Africa and Ghanaians really true? This video exemplifies how you feel when you come to Ghana. 
or any other African country. Just to as soon as possible, book your tickets. And you're coming to visit Africa for the very first time, come to Ghana because you're the gateway to Africa. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. Subscribe to the channel for more. Let me know what you think about this video. My name is Ambassador Vix. See you in another video. Peace out.